An apple falls from a tree and Sir Isaac Newton defines the groundbreaking laws of gravity. How much truth is in the story is debatable, but it has become a symbol of the start of research on gravity. Since then the field has advanced enormously and now we are taking it a step further and are talking about machines that create hypergravity. This refers to a gravity far beyond what we usually experience on Earth. The world's largest and most powerful hypergravity machine is currently being built in China. With it, scientists can artificially create gravitational forces more than 1000 times stronger than Earth gravity, allowing them to simulate extreme conditions and explore entirely new scientific possibilities. But what exactly is hypergravity for? How does it work and what challenges still remain? And with that, welcome to the German Science Guy. I'm Dr. Jakob Bouton and in Germany we say Los geht's. Gravity is fundamentally important for our life on Earth. We humans are designed to live with a gravitational pull. However, there are areas in which we are exposed to strong gravity, so called hypergravity. It is referred to as forces greater than the standard gravitational forces on Earth, which is 1g. The concept of hypergravity has been the subject of research for several years now. Various machines around the world can already generate such conditions. But now China is currently in the final steps of building a machine that is supposed to be the most powerful in the world with a capacity of 1900 gravitational tons. It could lead to breakthroughs in fields such as material science, geology and even biology. We will dive into how this kind of research works in just a moment. But first let's take a closer look at what gravity actually is. Gravitation or gravity is one of the four fundamental forces of physics and describes the universal force of attraction between any masses. In contrast, the gravitational force, often also simply referred to as gravity, describes the force that acts upon an object in a gravitational field. The gravitational force of Earth is 1g, that is 9.83 meters per square second. This is known as the acceleration due to gravity. 1g means that you experience the normal force of gravity on Earth and when you jump down somewhere, the speed at which you fall increases by 9.83 meters per second every second, at least in a vacuum, since in real life you will experience some air resistance. While Earth has a gravitational pull of 1g, on the Moon it is only 0.16g. That's why astronauts can jump several meters there without any problems. The planet with the strongest gravitational pull in our solar system is Jupiter, with just over 2.6g. Actually, on a roller coaster ride, you might feel g forces between 6g and minus 2g, and astronauts experience 3 to 4g during a rocket launch. Interestingly, if the acceleration acts perpendicular to the body axis, then even 15 to 20g can be endured by a human. But still, for that you need special training that strengthens your neck, leg and back muscles. All of these are hypergravitational states in which the force of gravity is stronger than Earth of 1g or 9.8 meters per square second. But experimentally, hypergravity is usually generated using a centrifuge. By spinning rapidly, it creates a centrifugal force that mimics stronger gravity. Due to the inertia, a body actually resists being turned and with that is pushed outwards, creating an effect similar to increased gravitational pull. These centrifuges can be used for many different things. One important area of application is material science and of course engineering. But aside from physical and technological experiments, a centrifuge can also be used to test cells, plants, small animals or even humans in hypergravity. This is particularly important for medicine and biology. For example, it is possible to gain an understanding of how cells react to gravity in general and to changing gravitational conditions. This is especially important for space research where such insights can be used to develop training or medicine strategies to counteract the effects of weightlessness. Pilots also train on centrifuges to be able to withstand g-forces better and avoid any health risk. There are already many of these hypergravity machines around the world, including one here in Cologne at the German Aerospace Center DLR and of course at NASA facilities in the United States. Various articles state that currently the centrifuge with the largest capacity in the world can generate up to 1200 gravitational tons. It is said to be the WES centrifuge of the US Army Corps of Engineers. But there is really very little to no information about it and even though I found a paper where it is listed as the most powerful centrifuge in the world, it is hard to say with certainty whether it really achieves that or not. 
Gravitational tons, by the way, is a unit for large centrifuges. For example, if we talk about 1200 gravitational tons, that means that you could accelerate two tons to up to 600 G or eight times 150 tons. In Europe, the most powerful known centrifuge is located in Zurich, Switzerland, with a capacity of 500 gravitational tons. And there are only three others of comparable sites across the continent. In Hangzhou, in China, the most powerful hypergravity machine is now nearing completion. It has been under construction since 2020, led by the Zhejiang University. Plans and funding were approved in 2018 and 2 billion yuan were invested. That's currently roughly 240 million euros or 280 million US dollars. The facility is called CHIEF, which stands for Centrifugal Hypergravity and Interdisciplinary Experiment Facility. It aims to simulate natural events, help to unlock future energy resources, serves and solve complex future engineering challenges. Construction was planned to take around five years, meaning it should be completed by the end of 2024. And indeed, November last year, the first centrifuge, or rather the main engine of it, is already switched on. The building of the hypergravity facility now covers an area of more than 34,000 square meters, and it looks very futuristic. According to different reports, it's said to include three centrifuges when finalized. Two of them are expected to be capable of a maximum of 1,900 gravitational tons capacity, generating up to 1,500 G with smaller payloads and hold a maximum of 32 tons of payload. Additionally, it will include six hypergravity laboratories and other supporting equipment. The six laboratories are designed to support research areas with focus on slope and dam engineering, seismic geotechnics, deep sea and deep earth engineering, geological processes and materials preparation. The university actually gives an application example. If you want to investigate the load on the foundation of a 100-story building, you will only have to build a one-story model, place it in the centrifuge and put it under the influence of 100 G of hypergravity. You could then simulate the load of a 100-story building. According to the South China Morning Post, Chief will be the most advanced facility of its kind when fully operational. It uses time and space compression as well as accelerated phase separations. Time compression means processes that naturally take thousands of years can now be studied within weeks or even days. For example, researchers can observe the movement of pollutions in the soil, a process that normally takes tens of thousands of years within a single experiment. This capability not only saves time, but also provides a more comprehensive understanding of phenomena that would otherwise be almost impossible to detect. Of special interest are also the phase separations of fluids and gases. Hypergravity conditions could make it possible to simulate a deep sea environment thousands of meters below the sea level. The extraction of natural gas hydrates can be optimized in this way. These are frozen fossil fuels that occur in the seabed and under permafrost. By simulating the mining processes, the scientists hope to minimize the risks and improve the efficiency of extracting this rich resource. It remains to be seen what will ultimately be realized. One also needs to be precise when talking about the capacity of centrifuges at the chief facility. In a press release 2019, it is stated that the centrifuge could reach a maximum capacity of 1,900 gravitational tons, while producing about 1,500 G and holding a maximum load of up to 32 tons. But if you do the math, 32 tons at 1,500 G would exceed 40,000 gravitational tons, which of course the machine cannot do. So what it means is that 60 G would be possible at 32 tons and 1,500 G would then be possible at a maximum of 1.2 tons. And actually, reportings about chief specifications remain inconsistent. These 1,900 gravitational tons are quoted in almost every newspaper article about the new hypergravity machine. In 2023, however, the government government mentions a more conservative capacity of at least 1,500 gravitational tons and two centrifuges at the facility in total. In December of 2024, the completion of one centrifuge with, again, a lesser capacity of 1,300 gravitational tons at the end of the year was declared and one for validation purposes with 100 gravitational tons. This is something that we face from time to time, especially with projects like this in China, where sometimes it is extremely difficult to see which information is correct and where articles take the information from. By the way, this is also why we always state our sources transparently with these numbers in the bottom corner and the sources are accessible in the video description. So whenever you watch a video of the German science guy, you can always check the sources. This is something that is really important for me. 
apart from these discrepancies, there's another big challenge and that brings us to the big but or the big hurdle. You know it from my other videos, this is the part where we look at the critical points of an innovation. But before that, activate the bell and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more videos and you also support this very young channel. Well, I think it's clear that these large hypergravity systems are exciting. I've already described how you can use them to test much larger constructions with models. But this compression of time, being able to investigate processes that actually take a very long time much faster, is even more exciting to me. Still, the big question remains for me, and this was not entirely clear during my research, what exactly makes a difference to the previous technology? There's barely any public information about the centrifuge used in the US and the new one in China isn't fully operational yet. Chief is certainly capable of enabling experiments under conditions that would otherwise be difficult to simulate. But I found it remarkable how little could be found about the real benefits of building such a large one. I suspect that it could be of special interest for more extreme geological experiments and especially on deep sea mining, but that's just my guess based on the little information that can be found. In the end, it remains to be seen to what extent the data obtained will actually provide new insights that would not have been possible before. And there's of course one more thing. Hypergravity machines are a type of simulation. Sometimes it is difficult to check how the results can be transferred to the real world. This simply requires a very precise analysis. So let's see when the entire facility will finally go into full operation. The Hangzhou government has promising words. Chief will fill in a void in the super large hypergravity experiment facilities in China. As an indispensable experimentation device, it will provide an advanced experiment platform and offer immense support for the development and verification of major engineering technologies as well as research into cutting edge matter related science. That sounds very promising, but as I said, it remains to be seen how it will be realized. And with that, take care, see you next time, you're Jacob. Oh, and here you find another video on the channel, so go check it out.